Okay, we're here outside the workshop. It's an old pub, dates from 1797 before then. Uh, and we moved here 10 years ago from just up the road. Been here in Chepstow making pots and plaques for the last 40 years. Moved here because my partner Annie got the job as curator of Chepstow Museum. Uh, and it's a great place to live. We came here for three years, we ended up staying 40. So if you want to come inside, you'll see what we do. The door is original to building, so it's about 250 years old. Um, it won't take paint, paint peels off it, so we just stripped it and it gets more compliments than the pots. Come inside. So into the workshop. As you can see, it's terribly crowded. Um, the potter's wheel, which probably doesn't get used as much as it should do because we are so often making plaques. And we make the plaques now for English heritage. And we also make the ceramic plaques for the City of London. And we've done that for the last 14, 15 years. So of the 160 plaques that you will find within the square mile of the city, about 40 we have made. Julia, who's hiding in the other workshop over there, makes the purple plaques for notable women in Wales. And if we go through into the other workshop, you'll see Julia and one of her purple plaques. So this is Julia. Julia and I have been working together for 30 years and uh, she is uh, the creator along with a little help from me of the purple plaques. Not only do we make plaques but we also do illustrated paving slabs and behind you leaning up against the kiln are two slabs which in a few weeks time will be gracing the pavement of Stratford-on-Avon and they'll be joining another 18 plaques that we've made already uh, and have been in the pavement in Stratford for the last six or seven years. The remarkable thing about these is that they're incredibly hard and the ones that are in Chepstow High Street in the highest footfall area show absolutely no signs of wear after 20 years that they've been installed. Um, we've done paving slabs like these for Stratford and um, Evesham and Weymouth and we've been doing six a year for, for each of those. And here, leaning up against the, uh, the cupboards, are part of a project for the island of Flatholm in the Bristol Channel. Again, illustrated paving slabs that will be installed uh, as part of the pathways. I think I was destined to be a potter because I used to dig clay out of my parents' garden when I was about eight years old and make things out of it. Uh, and even occasionally uh, try to fire pots in my mother's oven, thinking that I could turn them to pottery. I now know, of course, that that's not the case. 
but then going to a grammar school, um, pottery was not something that was pursued. Uh, and it wasn't until I went to art college that I really got my hands on clay again, but, it, but not as a subject. Uh, Julia has a degree in ceramics. Uh, I'm largely self-taught, so um, my approach is different to a lot of traditionally trained potters because I've devised ways of doing things myself. Uh, I started teaching pottery in a sixth form college, having just blagged my way through the interview, got the job and then learned on the job. Um, but that worked out okay because all the A-level students got A's and B's, even though I'd only stayed about two pages ahead of them for the first two years. Uh, at that time I used to run my life on five-year plans and the five-year plan was to become a competent potter, set up the workshop at home um, and eventually leave teaching. I did that after the five years and moved with my partner uh, down to Chepstow uh, and set up a workshop uh, which was just up the road from here initially making pots and selling pots and sculpture. Um, I used to make very highly detailed model aeroplanes, so I became obsessed with making highly detailed things in clay. And one of the things that I made was models of buildings, particularly pubs. Uh, and they weren't just pubs, they were Victorian pubs. They were the Victorian pubs that I'd seen when I was a bus conductor as a student in the summer holidays on Tees side when we used to drive through the areas of demolition for slum clearance. So I wanted to express that and express how emotional I felt about the demolished end with the peeling wallpaper and the marks where the pictures used to hang uh, and the occasionally bits of built-in furniture still left there and also the fact that the northeast was very much an industrial area and the pub names often reflected this so there were names like the crooked billet and the inclined plane and the iron master's arms so i made a whole series for probably 20 years of pubs with demolished ends with elaborate victorian facades but round the back they were a bit grubby and dirty which i thought was particularly uh, appropriate as it sort of reflected victorian life These pubs regularly come up in auction, in auction sales. There is a, um, a publican, an owner of a pub called the Trafalgar in Greenwich in London, who has a collection of them and buys them whenever they come available on the internet. So if you want to see some of my pubs, go to the Trafalgar in Greenwich. It's a great pub and the food's extremely nice. <laughs> I think about 25 years ago I started to make uh, ceramics for the outsides of buildings uh, and one of the first pieces we made is on the Tesco's store in Chepstow, two large panels illustrating the history of Chepstow and started to do a lot of lettering on um, tile panels. Uh, a local civic society came along and said, could we think about making some blue plaques for them? Uh, and by this time, Julia had started working with me. And we said, uh, yes, you know, give us six months to work out how to do it. Uh, and I'm sure we can give you a blue plaque scheme. It took us six months to work out how to do it, uh, and we have a lot of uh, had a lot of cracked plaques and failed plaques, which are now incorporated 
in the uh, foundation slabs of some of the buildings on Julia's family farm. Eventually we really got the system worked out and we produced a blue plaque trail for the town of Usk, which was followed quickly by a blue plaque trail for the, sound, for the town of Monmouth. Uh, and inquiries started to come in from other places, particularly Brighton, where we must have made 60 or 70 plaques for the town of Brighton. City of Brighton and Hove, sorry, it's, it's not a town, it's a city. About 2010, my partner Annie and I were up in London and on the Sunday we walked around the city, the square mile of the city, and one of the things we were doing were looking for the City of London Girls' School, the old site. The school itself has been demolished and it was a school that Annie went to. We couldn't find it. Um, the site had changed so much. But less than a week later, I got a, an email from the City of London asking me whether I'd consider making their blue plaques. And the second one we made was for the City of London Girls' School. So that's, that's fate, I think. As I say, I was destined to make blue plaques. We've got two ways that we do the lettering. We have a way that we have developed, which is uses a computer and we create from the computer a three-dimensional way of putting the lettering onto plaques. And the plaques that we make for Brighton and Hove are done in that way with the computer. The plaques that we do for English Heritage and now Historic England are entirely hand-lettered. So the hand lettering um, is done with something a bit like an icing bag, but with amazing control. And Julia does the hand lettering because Julia is really good at it and for so much better at it than I am. And it's a real achievement. When I was an art student in London, uh, I used to visit the Victoria and Albert Museum to do drawing. Uh, and I was fascinated by the ceramics gallery. Um, and I was particularly fascinated by Chinese ceramics. And it took me many years, 10 to 15 years, to work out how to do the copper reds. Uh, and I had a sudden realisation one day looking at the failures within the kiln and the fact that there were some areas which were bright copper red and other areas which were a dull and unpleasant grey that I realised why the areas that were a bright copper red were a bright copper red. Um, and from then on I was able to achieve these stunning glazes. My most popular glaze is another ancient Chinese glaze which is called a Chun glaze and it is a blue glaze, a pale blue glaze that is blue because it's for the same reason that the sky is blue. The, there are gas bubbles within the glaze which are about the same size as the wavelength of blue light and they scatter out the blue light. And the thing about a number of the Chinese Chun glaze pots in the Victoria and Albert Museum that so fascinated me when I was an 18-year-old art student is that they had a splash across of copper red within the, the, the two glazes. And these, this combination of glazes, which is a thousand years old, is my most popular glaze in terms of sales. <laughs>